it's all about, sir. Don't wait till the morning. I've hardly closed my eyes. Tea, sir. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the great pacifier. Mr. Gailey. Oh, God, no, thank you. Oh. Morning. Thank you, Morning. Mills. Morning, sir. God, you look awful. Oh, compliments fly. Now, you wait. Mm. Call, have an unconfirmed report from French intelligence of activity in our area. Now, the Huns either bring up a big gun, I mean a huge gun, or that's what he wants us to think he's doing. Clever. So, bluff or the real thing, we need to know which is a matter of some urgency. Straight there, straight back, if you please. Map reference. Well, let me check it first. Well, it's still dark out there. Very just. Once you're airborne, you'll get the benefit of the rising sun. Well, life's just one long flat these days. There's just a bit of aggression. Much there. more of this, I might just tell you, sir. You could get out of bed the wrong side. Oh, it's a hell of a place yeah. to get at, isn't it? Is it? Have a look at it. Ah, uh, well, problem's liable to be getting away. Yeah, where's that bridge? Uh, there. Look, mm. true or bluff, they're bound to be guarding the site. Mm, not against anyone coming in underneath that bridge, they're not. <laughs> underneath the bridge? Mm. Well, as I recall, the main span's more than wide enough. I just made it clear four foot either side. I know that. So, bridge. zoom, look about, get the hell out of it. What do you say? I know that bridge. You have to fly through the entire forest to get to it. Well, it's precisely the point, isn't it? I mean, they're not going to think anyone's going to be daft enough to try it, are they? Let's have a look at this. All right. Off you go, then. Be careful. That sort of clearance doesn't give you much leeway. I'm terrified already. Well, nothing else that means we must PT, doesn't it? Well, Miss Gravenson, sir. Yes. Ah. Thanks, Millie. Sir. Mm hmm. Oh, God. And one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mr. Starling. Mm -hmm. If you please, sir. Oh, sorry. Mr. Starling would like to work. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yes, it's about this physical training, actually. I don't like it much either. I'm not excusing anybody. I'm sorry. It's not the discipline I question, merely whether we're doing it the right way, do you see? Do you hear that, Mills? Yes, and I'd like to say that I only need to do it. Do you have to Sergeant? What then? My quarrel's with the Wait, system, do you see? Why? Well, it's designed to exercise the parts of the body, isn't it? I don't know. But by and large, would you agree? Would you agree? With what, sir? What he said. Well, I'm sorry, sir, I was outside. PT, it's designed to exercise the parts of the body. Yes, but with a view to toning up the whole. Exactly. All I'm saying is, what if we were to reverse the process, do you see? I'm afraid not, sir. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking Good about. Good Lord, it's a perfectly simple proposition. But let me put it another way. Suppose there were a system which were designed to exercise the whole while toning up the parts wouldn't it achieve the same results. That sounds feasible, that one. To achieve maximum overall fitness more quickly. Mills? No, what he said. Oh, um, bit pie in the sky, isn't it, sir? Well, I mean, seeing as there is no such system. Ah, but there is, Sergeant. Very recent, admittedly. I came across it when I was researching my paper on the mathematical relationship between music and movement in contemporary choreography. How many copies? It was interrupted by hostilities. But there is a system of rhythmic movements, especially with the aid of music, which can educate both mind and body, known as eurythmics, from the Greek eu meaning good, well, easily, and rhythmos, proportional rhythm, do you see? Cool. Well, the thing is, it isn't easy to explain. May I? It's a case of reaching the parts with long, flowing movements of the whole. So do you see. You're going to teach that to sea flight, are you, sir? Well, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> you must be joking. Randy Ammon dancing about with scarves first thing in the morning. I don't answer the consequences. Pity. However, you can apply this free-ranging mind of yours to this. It's a bomb site. It's devised by the Royal Aircraft Factory. Well, what's the problem? Well, we need to learn how to use this thing with rather more accuracy than we've achieved with the flower bombs, you see. Oh, yes. Splendid. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I've seen everything. Come in. Thank you. It's no time we heard from Mr. Galeans. Yes, it is.
God. I'm glad you didn't do that on the way. Let's get out of this damn thing before it catches fire. Charles? Charles! Charles, get out! Oil pump wrecked. Oil lines broken. Big end broken. Crankcase pierced. Pilot. Slightly grazed wrist. Observer. Bruised ribs. We're lucky to be alive, actually. We'll see. What happened? Just wasn't enough clearance. Well, you got in all right? Like a bird. Were you hit? No, not as far as I know. Oh, well, mind you, with all those nasties that were flying I'm about... I'm Mr. Gallium. Sorry, sir. Well, all right, I misjudged it. What do you wanted me to do about it? Commit Harry Kiri? Just take it easy. Oh, give me the chance. Well, leave it a bit vague in your accident report. Thank you. You see, at the time, it, it all happened so... How are you feeling? Fine. Foolish sort of way. Personally, I fancy a spell of farming. I'd better take up another aeroplane. The cavalry syndrome. If I don't do it now, that's if I have your permission. Of course. Granted. Thank you. Go with you. sure it's just laid and not being defied, are we? Let's hear what you're briefing. Well, I think Mr. Galian did rather well, sir. Because the thing is done well does not exclude the possibility, Sergeant, that it may not have been worth doing. Sir? Think about it. Well, how are we supposed to get that aboard a BE-2? You aren't. I try not to compound dimness with fatuity. This is a camera obscura from the Latin, meaning literally dark chamber. In its simplest form, thank you, it consists of a darkened chamber into which rays of light from an object or landscape can be reflected by means of an adjustable mirror through a convex lens to form an image of that object or landscape on <clears throat> paper glass or whatever. This model is, in fact, a refinement in that it uses a reflecting prism with one surface ground for convex curvature, thus serving as a lens as well as a mirror, and projecting the image onto this tracing paper. Artists use them. Sir Joshua Reynolds is known to have had one. Oh, wonderful. What do we do with it? <laughs> Silly of me. It seems so simple as to be unnecessary to explain. One simply lines up on the uh, image, do you see? And then the pilot's accuracy in the use of the sight can be plotted and measured on this chart. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, this time you've really earned your keep, Professor. It's very good. Thank you. What are we playing at? <laughs> you've got to admit it's fairly ingenious. Even I do. <laughs> it's a total, <laughs> typical academic waste of time. It works, I assure you. Oh, here, I dare say, but what's the point? I dare say we could all learn a score of bullseye on that thing here amongst the comforts of home. But do you seriously think it's going to be the slightest use up there with Hun Archie knocking hell out of us? Galeon. Not to mention craning our necks waiting for some Heindecker to come at us out of the sun when we're frozen stiff and plastered and on the blessed Lewis guns jammed. And that's when we've got to pinpoint the target. And fly the right course to line up on it, having adjusted the stupid sight for wind speed and direction, which I, for one, do not think is even remotely possible using gloved hands. What use is your, your camera, obscure. camera obscure experience going to be to us then, hmm? He's got a point. Any experience is better than none. Drop our bombs in the general target area, then get the hell out of it. That's what we've always done, and that's what I intend to go on doing. We'll practice with the rest of it. Will I, hell? Mr. Galeon! I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. Sir. I can only take on one of you at a time. Fine. I'll go first. Mr. Galen, you go second. Mr. Brabington, you go third. Just let me know when you've done What do I do with it? Um, here, do you see? If you'll excuse me, sir. I'll line up in the <coughs> cellar. Thank you, Mr. Sir. That'll be all. Sir. A bit early in the day for that. Oh, no doubt. Mr. Galen, no doubt. But then you're looking for trouble, aren't you? 
go in the distance with triggers like that. Well, it's a ridiculous exercise. It's an exercise! No point in putting your head on the line to make it out to be ridiculous. No special virtue in that. No, oh, well, that's the difference between us. Why not? Look, it's none of my business. Oh, well, keep out of it, will you? Yes, that's the other difference. All right. Maybe I was a bit hard on you when triggers went missing. Look, what is all this? Friendly remorse. Well, I don't need friendly remorse. Ace it! You have been cutting up a bit of late. You're imagining it. Am I? I better get back to Starling's folly, I suppose. Sorry I spoke! Now for the real thing. Target. 16-inch gun. Been playing Mary Hill with our supply columns. Location. The catch. Catches. An enlargement of the photograph you two managed to get. Shown to be located in the grounds of a general hospital. <laughs> Typical. Unprecedented, actually. Well, that's as risky as hell. No, I don't think so. It calls for pinpoint accuracy. Miss this brute. You're liable to kill a lot of wounded men. And some of our own have been taken prisoner. So I'll go in first. Mr. Starling, you go second. Mr. Galian, I want you to bring up the rear with Mr. Bravington, take photographic evidence of the actual damage. You mean you don't trust me? Listen, I put my time in over this blessed contraption. Never concealed your contempt for it. You said I was pretty damn good. Yes, I did. Well, I've given you another task, and there's an end of it. What, hanging around getting shot to pieces with old free screen here? Let's get on with it, shall we? I've a damn good mind not to go. Oh, don't be an ass. No, but the way he's taking a picking on me all the You're time. You're imagining it. too, Brute! Switches off, petrol arm. Air closed, suck in. Contact. 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 Right, it's no good, sir. She's, uh, she's choked. Switch off and open up your throttle wide. I'll uh, give it a few quick reverse turns just to release her. from my hands. They hurt a bit. Only two minutes, please. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> Never mind. The worst things happen at sea. Could have sworn I switched off. Yeah? Well. All the dreadful mistakes to make. Never mind. A bit of luck, it'll be a blighty one. Is there anything I can get you? Oh. A few fags would come amiss, sir. Yes, of course. Um, okay, I'll bring you some. He needs all the rest you can get. Oh. Yes, it's all right. Who knows? Yes. He will be all right. Well, he's lost a lot of blood. And then there's the shock. But yes, he should be all right. And he will be sent back to England? Well, he won't be much use out here with no hands, will he? Didn't you know? They couldn't save them. But he said that yes, he could feel a great deal of pain. Yes, that's for amputees. They can still feel the pain. Oh. I'm just coming. Excuse me. For God's sake, you weren't to blame! Says who? I've told you, it's in the accident report. 
The ignition switch on your engine was faulty. It failed three times out of five. Read it. Read it, please. What's that poor fellow going to do for the rest of his don't life? Don't brood, Charles. I'm not brooding. That what way madness you? lies. You Listen to me, Charles. I'm It's over. Put it behind you. So. Mills. Mills! Procedure for putting forward a pilot to be rested as flying instructor. I think you'll find that sea flight personnel are specifically excluded, sir. Because of our forward action policy? Yes. That's exactly why the man needs resting. Well, you could try asking RC headquarters to make an exception. Major Lansing, get me a bit of paper. It's a good idea. Before the place burns down, you're a Oh, well, it woke you up, didn't it, you dozy lot? All the damn silly things to do. Oh, come on, a bit of petrol on a rag. Hey, Jerome. You could have burnt somebody, you know? Well, who invented the pastime, eh? Eh? Oh, oh come on. Charles! Don't get up! Don't get up! 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 Get Mr. Bravington, that's enough! You'll live. God! Stand it. Well, I, I think I need a gargle. Anyone join me? No. Vincent! You know, you're going to have to do something about Charles. What the hell do you think I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get him transferred to Blight as a flying instructor. Is that wise? The trouble is, it's taking forever. No, no, I was querying whether the cure might not be worse than the disease. What disease? Well, you know as well as and I. His do. nerves gone? Temporarily, I happen to think. Maybe. Do you know what the official cure for that is? It's the firing squad. Cardis in the face of the enemy. That's ridiculous. There's a doctor at the London Hospital, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Barry. Oh, that's right, Dr. Barry. For at least a year, he's had a unit working with pilots who've cracked up. He's even got a term for Flying it. sickness D. Well, if you know all about it... There are also it, doctors who've been working for years on shell shock, battle fatigue. I command, don't wish to know. But why? Because it might, it might prove infectious. I see. Do you know how many self-inflicted wounds there are in the trenches? By comparison, our job's supposed to be easy. Yes, but the point is... The point is, the war might actually have to stop if both sides allowed their men to go sick from wounds you can't even see. A marvellous thought. Charles's only hope is for his transfer to come before he goes mad. <clears throat> Switch off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, get on with it. All right? Yes. Yes. Don't just stand there, get in. Can't face it. Don't let Triggers hear you say Okay, that. who hears? For God's sake, Charles, here he comes. Well, he can't be helped. 
Morning. Morning. Weather's closing in. There'll be no flying today. You can all go back to bed. Morning. Weather's closing in. You can go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that funny. Girl. Oh, but it is, it is, you know. <laughs> What's the joke? I really couldn't say. Last one back in bed's a sissy. So, Mr. Galeon's posting. Thank God. Get him for me, would you, Mills? He's down the field hospital, sir. Well, it's all right. He's just a mechanic. Sir. Yes, I believe, sir. Well, if you see him before I do, let me know, would you? Is there anything else? Which is usual, sir. Well, deal with it, would you? There's a good shot. Which is usual. You do it so well, Mills, you see. Thank you, sir. Um, none of my business. No, probably not. I did happen to notice from the files that it's Mr. Galeen's birthday today. Oh, you stout fellow. Hello, hello. How are you all today? Are you all right, are you? Yes, yes. Sir? Nothing's going to happen. Doing it? Well, you're getting pretty handy with that thing now. Handy, is it? Never mind. No, it's a, it's a touchy subject. <laughs> well, you've got me at it. <coughs> Could you? Um, yes. J just. Hmm? Yeah. So, don't want to set myself on fire, do I? No. Not on top of everything else. Everybody, let's get you ready for tea and get into bed. And let's have you out of bed. Bed, is it? Oh, yes, we know all about that. Have you were in bed, love. It's all right for some. It's not out Oh, dear, what must you think of us? Oh, but you will stay for tea, won't you? I don't want none. Don't be silly. I'm sure that your visitor will help you with it, won't you? I'm the only one you need to worry about, darling. If you don't behave yourself, you won't get any tea. Who wants tea? And nor will any of your pals. Oh, <laughs> cow. Well, I'd be glad to help. I would really. I was thinking about me. Mm. Not you. Yes. I don't mean to. You know they can do wonderful things now for... Uh... Amputees is the word. Well, they really can. Did I tell you I'm going home? No, no, you no, didn't. Yeah, I am. Good. End of the week's the word. Spend it. Of course, when I say home, I mean the rehabilitation centre. Well, that's halfway home, isn't it? So I'm told. You've got to learn to cope. For the rest of my life. Look upon it as a challenge. For the rest of my life. <laughs> it could get to be boring. What about me? Boy, oh, good time. The office is first in heaven, I shouldn't Tea. wonder. There we are. <laughs> now then, do we need a bedpan? Well, I don't. I can't speak for you. There's no need to be disagreeable. Sorry. Now then, if you want to think yourself now of something, uh, you can help by pouring out the tea. Milk? Please. Right. Um, no, that's last one. Sugar? Check it. Two. Oh, thank you. All right. Mm. It might be a little hot. No. Tip it up. Hmm? Oh, it is hot. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, some more milk. No, it's, it's weak enough as it is. Sorry. Let it cool. So. All right. Um, with some bread and butter. I've got to, haven't I? One bit at least. 
Else I can't have me cake. Oh. That's what my mum used to say. She's gonna hate these. Oh, I don't know. I do. What are you staring at, Vincent? Nothing. nothing. Well, my sister was born with her lip. Oh, not bad, myself. I, I hardly noticed it. My mum, it was all she could do to bring herself to look at it. The kid died. Pneumonia. My mum was glad. She told me she was glad. Well, well, I'm quite sure this will be different. Why? Uh, they, they really aren't very... D disfiguring. You want to come in here when they're changing my dressings? <laughs> it was my birthday last week. She, she never even wrote to me. How about some cake, then? Well, why don't you just relax, enjoy things for change instead of intellectualizing all the time? You'd be surprised how hard I try. He's mm. coming. Stand by. He's come. I say, did you hear the other day the 12th Lance has mounted a cavalry charge? Huh? Any turn? <laughs> well, the Colonel spitted four Huns really? personally. Big birth. Am I late? I'm Not sorry. at all. Oh, uh, well, who are we dining? Just us. But the, the message said it was a guest night. Well, we like to keep up appearances, you know. Like dressing for dinner in the jungle. I see. <laughs> Look at Mills. Here we are, gentlemen. Excuse me, sir. What is all this? Well, open it. Go on. It is intended as a pleasant surprise. Go on, Mills. Is another of your practical jokes? Absolutely not! Sergeant Mills, I dare. Noticing the date, sir. It's the best we could think of by way of a present. So! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Charles! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> If you excuse me, sir. Leave him be, leave him be, Richard. Sit down. Excuse me, gentlemen. Job's comforter rides again. Times when one hates to be right, and this is one of them. Yes. Well, on with the dance or delay. <clears throat> Sir, I ought to... Certainly not. It. You'll sit down, finish your dinner if it chokes you. Have some champagne. Huh? Drink up, Richard. Careful, sir! It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> Mate began. <sighs> well, with a bit of luck, you're getting the spot of homely. Yeah, I do feel awful about leaving you so short. Oh. Well, when you're through, I'll see what I can do about getting you posted back here. Thank you. <laughs> Safe. You're a demo. Yes. <laughs> Look after yourself. I'll try. If you don't, no one else will. I mean it. G can I send you anything? What, a pot of him for the mess? Right. I'd be awfully glad of a copy of Principia Mathematica out here if you should happen on one. Oh, no. Try and remember that. <laughs> Russell and Whitehead's not Newton's, of course. Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> if you happen to be anywhere near Trumpers, perhaps you could get them to send me out a bottle of uh, honey and flower hair oil. Yeah. It does look as easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right! Coming here, Green with envy. Mr. Starling, I'm supposed to be on patrol. Yes, sir. Mr. Charles, Levin. 
Well, am I expected? Indeed you are, sir. I understand we're to have the pleasure of your company for a week. Yes, about that. You're looking fit, if I may say so. Am I? Well, you're not looking exactly undernourished yourself. <laughs> one does what one can to make ends meet, sir. Yes, I'm sure one does. Well, anyone at home? Your mother and the Major General are taking tea, sir. Major General? The promotion has only been recently gazetted. Charles! I thought I heard your voice. How lovely to have you home. Thank you. My boy? Father. Well, it didn't take you long getting that pip up. Congratulations. Mind you, I have to pay the price. Well? Consigned to the war house. As director of liaison and munitions. Well, sounds important. Glorified desk squalor, that's all. It's not my idea of soldiering. Still, I don't suppose you're too tickled about being brought back to lick a lot of learners into shape, hmm? Oh, I don't know. Somebody's got to do it. My sentiments, exactly. As long as they let us get back before the whole show's over, hmm? Tea, dear. Thank you. You've just time for a cup. Before what? I'm down to address a rally in the East End to encourage women to volunteer for work in munitions factories. Regular Amazons, your mother and Kate. Kate? You'll see. I've been hoping you'll get back in time. You will come, won't you? What for? Oh, my dear, you're what it's all about. Oh, oh, no, Mother, really. I, I, I'm really not very good at that sort of thing, you know, public speaking. And no, so we'll forth. do all that. You just have to stand there, in uniform. There's harpies down there who'll strip the boy to the buff. Now, you just keep out of this. Honestly, Mother, I... Now, I, please, Charles. You have a heart. This is the first time that he's been home in months. He doesn't want to go down to the docks and stand about like a tailor's dummy, do you? Frankly, no. Oh, well, never mind. Another time, perhaps. I must dash. Don't be late for dinner, will you? Of course not. Thanks. Well, still, I had an ulterior motive. The Secretary of State's coming to dinner tonight. I want you, in top-notch form, to tell him what's what. What you boys out there are up against. What it's really like. Straight from the horse's mouth. I see. Well, I'll be getting back. Shuffle some papers about a bit. I'll see you at dinner. Yes, yes, of course. Do something, will you? Wear your uniform tonight for me. A bit of mud and blood, perhaps. Joke. It's not a bad idea at that. Overdoing it a little, little don't you think? Perhaps. Just our man from the front. Right. Clean, bright, and lightly oiled. Hmm? 7.30 for eight. Hello, Kate. Father. Charles is back. Thank you. At it already? Well, early start my other night, I thought. Good Lord. Gailey and Kate, Women's Driving Corps. Present and ready for your inspection, sir. <laughs> well, what is this? Abbott of theatricals or another change of heart? Hmm? Would you believe a bit of both? <laughs> well, same old Kate. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. You can give me one of those. Well, already. Some of us had better keep in step tonight. Oh, Lord, yes. Father's dinner party. You want bread, too? You bet. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm afraid he's only got this mess of voting sweet sherry, huh? I'll survive. Oh, there we are. Well. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, I will say, you certainly don't do things by halves, do you? Hmm? Well, this isn't entirely for father's benefit. Ah. Actually, There Charles. was this divine man. Oh, uh, you always were foul. Yes, yes, but accurate. Quite. Although Alastair is only part of it. Hmm? The motto made me laugh. Motto? Roadhogs are to boo? <laughs> oh, you should have seen that? Mother's face when she read it. <laughs> Still, thought of you driving there. Good Lord, it's worth a full division. Well, thank you. To the hunt? Beast. 
I'll have you know I haven't had an accident. Oh, since where? Last month. Oh, come along, come along. Let's have the truth. That is the truth. No, rubbish. Apart from a slight contretemps with a shop window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's good to see you again. Mutual. I hear you've got a transfer. Yes, to flying school, would you believe? As an instructor, mind you. In the case of the blind leading the blind, I think. A welcome change, I think. Yes. And how's your sergeant friend? Mine or yours? Alan Farmer. He's missing. He got shot down. I'm sorry. Gone but not forgotten. Life goes on. Or not. That's why I welcome an opportunity to uh, talk to someone, as it were, on the receiving end. Charles? Father? This is Gideon. The floor is yours. The Secretary of State would like your views, dear. Oh, off the record, of course. Yes, well, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I can only talk for the RFC, of course. Quite, quite. Well, then, uh, with due respect, as I say, I'll be frank. It strikes me that you're putting the cart before the horse. Kate, dear, I think perhaps you and I Oh, might. no, yes. please. I'm among friends, surely. Well, of course. But the overall position can't always be appreciated by the man in the field. Oh, but it's his view I want, not filtered through committees. Or even, forgive me, professionals whose experience is somewhat less immediate. Go on. Well, it seems to me that most of the things that go wrong, and I'll come to them, they stem from the fact that no one's really, really stopped to think about our role in this war. What it is, what it should be, what it could become with, well, all, all right, the limited resources that we have at our disposal. Don't overstate your case. Oh, I haven't started yet. Charles. The point is, I don't know where to start. Now, take your time. Well, for instance, then, the BE-2. It's, it's not a bad aeroplane. It's stable, reliable, pleasure to fly, in fact. As an observation platform, it's hard to beat, but in that role, it does need protection. And in any other role, it's absolutely useless because it's not a fighter, it's not a bomber, and it's certainly not a gun bus. It has a laughable field of fire, no speed, and a rate of climb that any self-respecting kite balloon could outpace. Do you exaggerate? Well, a trifle, just to make the point. You see, it all depends what you want. I mean, if we're supposed to be the eyes of the artillery, all well and good. The BE-2 is a mobile observation platform, and there's an end to it. But in which case, for heaven's sake, equip us with proper air-to-ground communication. Wireless? Oh, I don't care what it is. I just don't want to have to fly around through anti-aircraft fire, trying to make contact with berry lamps, all this lights, trying to read Morse code being signal on flapping Venetian blinds, for God's sake. Oh, oh sorry. On the other hand, if we're supposed to drop bombs, shoot down kite balloons, knock out machine gun posts, then for heaven's sake, give us the armament and the, and the aeroplanes to do the job, so at, at least we stand a chance of staying alive. The Huns have fast machines, you know, with interrupter gears, forward firing machine guns, God knows what else. I mean, don't expect us to be able to cope with them in an obsolete aeroplane with more blind spots than it has arcs of fire. Or if you do and it doesn't work, I mean, don't be so surprised about it. Uh, and either way, overcome this at Oh, we'll live in some other time, please! Overcome this attitude of aircraft park and Royal Aircraft Factory that the people who actually do things are, oh, I don't know, wanton, extraneous, a sort of administrative embarrassment to cater for. We are, with due humility, what the Royal Flying Corps is about. And the justification, and the only justification, for the rest of you? I am most grateful. Oh. Thank you. Well, an illuminating evening, Galen. I only hope, Mr. Secretary, that you will make due allowance for the 
intemperance of youth. Your boy, do you mean? Well, I'm afraid he rather got the bit between his teeth. Nonsense. My dear chap, I spend my day surrounded by place seekers who go in mortal terror of having to think what they think, let alone say it. The alternative is stimulating, not to say informative. Oh, I shall pass it on with interest. I'm delighted that you can see it that way. My dear fellow, if I were in your place, I'd be as proud as a peacock. Good night. Good night. Levin. Congratulations. Personally, I thought you sailed a bit close to the wind. My lord and master was Bulversi. Good. Yes, I was pleased. Coffee? No, thank you, my dear. You scored as a man who'd been out there, came home, and couldn't wait to get back to your duty. Father? You'll never know how much of a fraud I felt. Time for this. Do you think? Don't. Why do you think I got this posting, Father? Due for it, I imagine. You'd hardly have chosen it. Why wouldn't I? Leave it. Leave it, Charles. Well, good God! Any of us would pack this in to be out there hammering the Hun, wouldn't we? Oh, Father, if only you knew! Do you know what I thought? I hope so. Well, you're wrong. I thought all I thought every night was, thank God. Thank God I've got another 13 hours of life left. Because that's what it's about now, Father. That's all that it's about. There are no villains anymore, no heroes. All there is is fear and fatigue and shades of grey. Do you know why I got this posting, Father? Because if I hadn't, I would have cracked up. Should I have told that to your Lord and Master? I should have been ashamed. If ashamed? You, you wouldn't have been ashamed? Well, what about me? What about me? Oh, God! Kate? My dear. Oh, Charles. I'll see you in the morning, Kate. Wasn't the drink talking, you know? No. Well, that, that was just a little Oh, you're bit. such an ass, Charles. You drive yourself into a breakdown trying to hide the fact that you're afraid. And when at last you're shot of it for a while, you have to tell father, of all people. Why? Why him? Why now, when it's academic... Because it is academic, don't you see? For the first time. For the first time since I went to France. I don't, don't have to pretend anymore. Admit to being a coward or try to be a hero, but not both. You'll only disappoint everybody and incidentally that way fall apart yourself. You know, I did think that you of all people, just you, might understand. Stop trying to prove things. Well, isn't that what it's about? Isn't that all that it's about? Trying to prove things? To yourself, not to other people. Besides, paradox. To say I am afraid is arguably brave. To say I was is merely hurtful. You see, I do understand, I just don't agree. Oh, for God's sake! Of course, unforgivable. Poor Charles and I. And poor us. Poor father. <laughs> 